this is the machine which is called as a universal testing machine so this machine gives us the load carrying capacity or as the load bearing capacity for a certain materials basically it gives the ultimate tensile strength of a material so over here this machine is uh, used gives us a particular reading or gives us the maximum load bearing capacity load carrying capacity of a certain material which is expressed in MPA so now let's talk about the total uh, like your, your experiment so over here I'm having a specimen which is having a certain diameter D and having a certain length L so now this uh, particular specimen is held vertically uh, into your universal testing machine and then the load on the opposite directions gets applied that is nothing but the tensile load as you can see over here this is the tensile load which gets applied on your both the sides of your specimen so after the application of the loads you know the stress will stresses will get induced in that specimen and due to that stresses there will be a certain amount of the deformation which will there occur in that particular specimen now the main point is that this, this particular specimen is is uh, made up of the ductile material it is not made up of the brittle material it is made up of the ductile material and in this video we are going to talk about only ductile material and in this video we will covering the stress strain relationship between this that particular ductile material how the ductile material shows the you know different types of the curves which how the ductile material shows you know the behavior before failure what is the elastic region what is the plastic region so guys please watch my video till the end and uh, guys please do subscribe to my education channel engineers academy so guys let's roll out the intro let's begin with our today's topic that is the stress strain relationship for ductile material so we'll hold our specimen into utm universal testing machine and we'll apply a tensile force on the both the sides of your specimen basically so it means your specimen will be in the your loading condition so as the load gets applied on the both the sides in the opposite direction there will be a considerable amount of the stress as well as strain which will get induced in your specimen so as the specimen is of the ductile material it is very important to check out the stress and the strain relationship curve it is very important to study that curve in order to understand the uh, different uh, phenomenon such as the necking such as the ultimate tensile stress such as the yield stress and the your breaking point so all these details will get from this stress strain curve so over here this is the stress strain curve for the uh, ductile material so over here point O is the origin point and point A is the limit of proportionality so this is called as a limit of proportionality there is a straight line which represents that this particular stress is directly proportional to your strain it means as the stress increases the strain also increases so that particular straight line represents your stress is directly proportional to your strain which is nothing but the limit of proportionality so this is nothing but the limit of proportionality so up to which the material shows the material will be shows the linear behavior that is nothing but the nothing but the stress is directly proportional to the strain so that's why it is known as the limit of proportionality after point a the linear relationship you know there won't be any kind of linear relationship there is will be the formation of the curve so at that particular point b here the stress will remain constant but the there will be the considerable amount of the strain will be there so that is nothing but the point B so that point B is known as the limit of elasticity or we can call it as an elastic limit in certain cases it is called as an elastic limit in some cases it is called as the yield point so why this elastic limit up to point B the material shows the you know the elastic behavior material is into the elastic region as you can see over here the material is there in elastic region up to point B but after point B that material goes into the plastic region that means the permanent deformation is there so that's why the point B is termed as the elastic limit basically so 
also it is termed as a uh, yield point so why this is yield point yielding yielding is nothing but the deformation so after point b the deformation occurs deformation is starts basically and the material is then uh, goes into the plastic region so that's why it is termed as a uh, yield point or at the certain cases it is termed as a yield stress sometimes this point b is termed as a upper yield point so don't get confused between this point b so point b is very much important which shows the you know this particular elastic limit which is also the yield uh, st stress yield point yield point or we can call it as a upper yield point so moving ahead next is the point c at point c you know the stress is considerably reduced but the strain is increased so at point c you know the defo actual deformation starts actual deformation means at point c we'll see uh, the material gets deformed or we can call it as a necking gets started so necking is nothing but the phenomenon which occurred in your ductile material as you can see over here this particular curve gets formed which is nothing but the necking so it just looks like a neck so that's why it is called as a necking phenomenon which is occurs in the ductile material so at point c we'll get, check out this necking phenomenon this particular point c is also termed as you know the lower yield point the whereas the point b was upper yield point over here this point c can be termed as a lower yield point moving ahead next is the point d so at point d you know this necking phenomenon you know increases as the stress increases as the load increases over here at point d the load increases or we can call it as a stress increases also there is a increase in strain but the stress is at the higher point so that's why this particular point d is termed as a ultimate tensile stress this is the maximum stress a particular specimen can carry so this is the maximum reading which uh, you will get it by from the universal testing machine the your the pointer will show that kind of particular reading so this is the ultimate tensile stress point and after at point e your material will get failed there is like uh, the uh, the breaking will occur over here at point e so the breaking will get occur at point e sometimes this point e is known as the rupture point or else the failure point so guys that was all about your your stress strain relationship now let's understand why do we need to learn this particular stress strain relationship now in engineering there are various kinds of materials such as like ss304 aluminium copper zinc molybdenum so there are various kinds of material and in engineering there are various types of grades of steels so each type of grades of the steel which gives a different amount of percentage elongation each type of different steel shows the different amount of the percentage elongation yield stress ultimate tensile stress so by considering the application of your product by considering the application of your raw material we need to select a proper material for a proper application so that is the main reason you need to check out the ultimate tensile stress we'll get it from this stress strain curve we'll get it from the physical properties we'll get it from the uts cells so these are the ranges which is required to select a proper material for a proper application so that your material under loading condition it won't fail and you will get a better amount of the quality better amount of the reliability and ultimately you know your application will get satisfied over here so that is the main reason you need to understand also you will get a different amount of uh, you know ultimate tensile stress value for different uh, materials so this is the this this is the main reason behind learning of this stress strain relationship so that was the part for ductile material in case of brittle material that is very very different so in the brittle material the rupture takes very easily there is no considerable deformation before failure but over here in ductile material there is a considerable deformation before failure so this is the main reason to understand you know this particular stress strain relationship and 
it is the basic fundamental of the engineering it is the basic fundamental in the material science as well so you have to understand that the stress strain relationship for the ductile material so guys i hope you understood this particular video and the relationship between the stress and the strain uh, in k in terms of your ductile materials so guys thank you for watching my video please do subscribe to my educational channel engineers academy